Welcome to worship at St. Stephen's United Methodist Church in Norman, Oklahoma. Wherever you are, whether you are part of the circle that is here in person, or if you are joining us from your home or joining us later in the day, later in the week, we are glad to have you as part of our worship uh, circle of St. Stephen's. A few things that I would announce uh, today. Happy Pride Month is one thing. Uh, we are happy to celebrate Pride Month, even though Norman Pride Parade will not be until October. We are uh, still honoring June as traditional Pride Month uh, here at St. Stephen's. Also, today we are having Holy Communion, and if you are worshiping from home, you will want to have your communion elements uh, where you can get to those when the time comes. Part of our communion is that we have a mission offering each time that goes in the, the fish that is on our table. We call it the fish basket, because that's kind of what it is. And um, so our fish basket offering today is going to the youth. Um, Alyssa is starting to work on the possibility of a youth mission trip in August. Let me tell you, you never saw teenagers be excited about getting shots before, but these teenagers are excited. They are starting to get their vaccinations, and so uh, we are working on um, what we can do as a youth mission trip. So the, um, the fish basket offering today will be going toward the youth. Alyssa also says that the youth are meeting in person um, here at the church on Sunday evenings, and need some uh, food. They like to have, they have a meal, and so she's going to be putting up a dinner sign-up sheet on the wall where it used to be, near the office, so that people can sign up to bring uh, dinner for the youth one Sunday. So that's uh, an exciting thing. Another thing that's coming up, this coming Saturday, June the 12th, we are having a, uh, a church field trip. We're going to Tulsa, to the Greenwood District on, um, on Saturday. We're going to meet here at the church to leave at nine o'clock. We've got tours arranged for the Greenwood Cultural Center, Vernon AME Church, and the John Hope Franklin Reconciliation Park. And there's a new museum that just opened last week that is in that area too. And so we'll be uh, seeing all of those things. We'll be uh, carpooling and caravanning, and so if you would sign up on the sheets, if you're interested in going, then we'll know whether you're wanting to um, drive and follow along or take somebody else with you, so uh, let us know about that. If you want to go over and just uh, meet up with the group, there's a schedule, so that if, you're, if you want to take your kids to the new park or something like that, there's a schedule so that you can know what time to meet the rest of us in certain places. So all of that is uh, happening next Saturday, our field trip to Tulsa. And uh, there's the coffee talk. Um, you want to say something about that, Julie? All right, thank you, Julie, and thanks for uh, making arrangements about that. And now, if you are worshiping from home, I would invite you to greet one another in the chat box. And if you are here in person, I would invite you to stand and uh, at a distance, greet the people who are worshiping around you. Should have got the other shirt. I should have worn that one. Yeah. I should have got my other shirt. Yeah, you should have. Oh, at least I have a St. Stephen shirt on, so that's an important thing. Hey, over there, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. 
Jim, I invite you to light your candle as we light the candles here in the sanctuary. Good morning. Good morning. Please stand and join me in the call to worship, and we will follow that up with a hymn in the black hymnal, number 2225, Who is my mother? Who is my brother? And we'll sing verses 1, 3, and 4. Close or distant, well-defined or fluid, family is a concept that tugs at us. Family, we want more, we want less. Sometimes we just want to choose. Community and faith community are families for us as well. Families that align with values and choices that we make. Yeah. We are strengthened and blessed by such ties and give thanks to God for them. God, we often forget that you are the ruler of our lives. Instead, we turn our attention elsewhere. We want what others have. We allow the concerns of the world to weigh us down. We become distracted by the activities around us. We forget to keep our focus on you. Forgive us, strengthen our faith, that we may see your presence in our lives. Remind us again that you are the Lord of our lives. Remind us again that you are the Lord of our lives. The one who loves us completely. The one who offers us abundant forgiveness. The one who never leaves our side. In your holy name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. And for those of you at home, if you would gather children around the screen, as here in the sanctuary, we invite kids to come up and meet Miss Lynette for story time. Oh, that's kind of So, uh, did you like that little mini story we had this morning? 
We can jump and cuddle. Two pals can go out far away and don't play. No, I saw. Ah, my shoes are gonna get wet. Then, then I was like, okay, I'm just gonna tiptoe. Have you ever tiptoe around puddles? No? I do it all the time. Uh, well, a, a few months ago, I didn't tiptoe so great. Mm. I kind of bored my own. Um, I have a really good book. It's called This Day in June. And uh, you heard Dee's birthday. Um, you can write a uh, parkour, but um, you heard they not doing it for October. Right? Yeah. Well, no, not for October. Yeah. Just because of the pandemic, we are still working things out. We want to make sure that we have a good crowd. So, it is this day in June. And it says, this was given to St. Stephen's in June 2014 by Steve Davis and Eddie Rossimel. So, there's that headdress, thank you. Looks like peacock feathers. This day in June, parades start singing, rainbow arches, joyful marches. Ooh, I like the, the rainbow balloons. We'll, we'll have to try to make one of those. We can do it. We can. Motors rolling, spirits soaring. What, what sound is the motor truck make? Vroom, oh. vroom. Mm -hmm. oh, Voices chanting, doggies panting. Oh, God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cloud and weather, perfect weather. Artists came. Sister Sing. That's all pink. Daddy Sing, Children Play. Which is one of the Love Not Hate. Love Not Hate, that's right. Dancers Jumping, Music Pumping. I got the gym boxes. Mermaids. Well, I can't go wrong with the mermaids. Sidewalk shaking, tummies aching. Did you eat too much? Mm -hmm. I think that's what it is. Painted ladies, crying babies. It says equality. Mm -hmm. Fancy dresses, flowing tresses. You know what tresses are? What's this for? Ooh. Ooh -hoo. Ooh. I want to have a question. Well, they're all dressed up. Loving kisses, so delicious. Five. Mm -hmm. All invited, all excited. <gasps> Which shoes would you wear? Those ones? I kind of like those. <laughs> yeah. You like the boots? Mm. Okay. This day in June, we were all united. We were all together. And everybody's sharing and caring. And that's the end of it. So, remember, everybody deserves to have someone to love. And God loves us all. So remember that. Next time, we're having a bad day. Remember, God loves you. And so does everyone in this church. Okay, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for sharing love with us. Teach us to share that with others what we need. Help us to have kind hearts. In your name we pray. Amen. Now, you guys can now go to celebration. Yes.
the parents. Words will break them. for ages. Name calling. We know about it, don't we? It's a way to regard others as less than. It's a way to diminish a person or their actions or their accomplishments. Name calling is a form of verbal abuse a bias employed to negatively impact another person. It's a type of bullying. And as we have seen to an astonishing degree in the past couple of years, name calling is not limited to kids. But you know, name calling has been around for a really long time. It's in the Bible. We hear about it some right there in Mark, what I just read to you. But there is an even more colorful incident from the Hebrew scriptures, so much, much older. And I bet you've never heard it read in church because we're not actually very proud of this verse, these couple of verses here in 2 Kings. Let's see, 2 Kings 23 is about the prophet Elisha. It says, Elisha went up from there to Bethel. As he was going up the road, some young people came out of the city. They mocked Elisha. They said, get going, Baldy. Get going, Baldy. Turning around, Elisha looked at them and cursed them in the Lord's name. Then two bears came out of the woods and mangled 42 of these youth. <laughs> From there, Elisha went to Mount Carmel and then back to Samaria. <laughs> Have you heard that one read in the church before? Like I said, we're not proud of those verses being in the Bible. But there, there was no calling. Name calling, trying to put someone down way back then. Here in Mark, Jesus has just only begun his ministry. And he's making quite an impression. He's going around healing the sick and drawing large crowds and speaking words about injustice and the failures of the established powers, both governmental and religious powers. And so those who have power, who have religious power and authority, can't really find a way to counteract him. So what do they do? They turn to mocking him. He's possessed. He uses demonic power. He's out of his mind. They can't really refute him. And so they resort to name-calling, bullying. So it seems that his family heard about it. And they came to where he was, his mother and his siblings. Maybe they came to stop him, to convince him to get away. Maybe they thought he wasn't safe. Maybe they were trying to rescue him. But maybe they were embarrassed by what was going on, and they were trying to intervene. Even though Jesus was uncowed by the name calling, he didn't want to be rescued by his family. But you know, they did show up for him. When they thought something was going wrong, they did show up. They weren't on the same page he was at this point in the story, but they weren't going to leave him to face the bullying alone. Family runs deep, blood is thick. But you know there were other people there for him too. His friends, 
his followers. As it describes there, it says he looked around the circle to the people who were there eating with him, those who were close to him. They were on the same page. They believed his message. They were willing to face the bullying themselves by his side and not rescue him from it, but take it on themselves as well. So those folks were showing up for him too, but in a different way. They were showing up for him shoulder to shoulder, standing by him, and what happens next is we get those well-known words from Jesus. Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Well, these folks who are with me and around me and doing God's will. And with that, Jesus redefines family. He broadens it. And so he offers the grace of creating family of choice. We know about creating our own families of choice, don't we? Jesus offers that image. Surrounding himself, encouraging us to surround ourselves with those who show up for us, not out of choice, I mean, not out of obligation, but out of choice. Those who show up and become family, a chosen family. And the chosen family then can also be called a beloved community, standing together, shoulder by shoulder, grace and peace. Amen. So let us pray. Ever gracious God, you are indeed like the best of family. You are the one who shows up for us. You are the one who believes in us, even when it feels like no one else does. Your love is unconditional. And it doesn't matter what we've done or where we've been. For you always stand with open arms. And so as siblings of Jesus, we join our hearts and our voices together in this prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed by your name, your kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day the food we need to forgive our sins. We forgive those who sin against us all. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever, ever and ever. Amen. Our hymn this time is also in the Black Hymnal, verses 2 and 3, 
at 2236. Please stand if you're comfortable doing, and let's sing. Join with me now in the ritual of Holy Communion. Your responses are there in the bulletin. Uh, there is not the reader line that you will expect to hear before the Holy, Holy, Holy. And that is simply join me their unending hymn. Um, so please join me in your responses printed in the bold type. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, sovereign of the ages, whose strong and loving arms encompass the universe. For your inner word and Holy Spirit are with you forever, one God. Through your word, you created all things and called them good. And in you, we live and move and have our being. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth, and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven. We praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, who called you Abba, Father. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own and fill them with longing for a peace that would last and for a justice that would never fail. <clears throat> On that last night, Jesus was with his disciples. He broke the bread and he gave it to them saying, take, eat. This bread is like my body, which I will freely offer up on your behalf. From now on, every time we eat the bread, remember, I am always, always with you. After the supper, he took a cup and he gave thanks to you and shared it with those who were present, saying, drink from this, all of you, this, is the sign of a new covenant written in my blood, sweat, and tears so that you will know the full depth of God's love and forgiveness. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, 
we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living prayer in union with the prayer Christ prays for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and these gifts of bread and juice for we find there the essence of you. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the earth through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. You are invited guests here at this table. You need not be a member of St. Stephen's or of any church to come and receive. We'll invite you forward in just a short moment and ask you to pick up a piece of the bread and then a tiny cup and then take that back to your seats. Because there is one loaf, we are one people. We share in a single cup as Jesus did that night. All is ready. Won't you come?
Let us pray. God of grace and God of family, God of our community and choices, grant that with this remembrance, we may be renewed in our strength, in our resolve, in our mission to go out and to live as your people in every way. Amen. And now I invite you to stand for the benediction. Good people of God, you are blessed, you are called, you are encouraged to show up, to stand shoulder to shoulder, to be with those who need you to be with them. Amen. Amen.